Well, Congress member Charlie Chris, thank you so much for coming on WMNF. It's my pleasure, Sean. Great to be with you always. On Tuesday, you released an email statement that was very critical of what, what your understanding was of the raid on the home of Rebecca Jones, the, former, the state's former COVID-19 data manager. What were, yes. what were your main concerns about what you saw in that raid? Well, that it was a guns drawn uh, raid into her home with her children there. And I'm sure many of your listeners, uh, viewers saw the video. Uh, it's been on MSNBC and CNN the last 24 hours, and it's very disturbing to me. And, you know, somebody is suspected of doing something wrong and a warrant has been issued, which according to FDLE, a warrant was issued in this case. Um, but this was not some kind of, you know, uh, heinous crime. This was, you know, talking about maybe sending a message that shouldn't have been sent, which she denied she did. And so why they came in with guns drawn when apparently no violence was even suspected here is bizarre to me, to say the least, Sean. I don't understand it. And even after she was in custody, I guess you would say, she was completely complying, it seemed. Uh, they, they were still concerned that her children were upstairs and maybe her husband, and the, but, her, but their guns were still out. Uh, um, I, I'm not sure what my question is here, but is there, is there, do you have any concern in the fact that there were children involved in this raid? Oh, absolutely. Of course. Yeah, I think she said she had a, a, a young daughter and son that were in the home, uh, that her husband had gone upstairs with the children, I think holding one of them, if I saw her interview correctly last evening. And, you know, to have guns pointed at, at, a, child, at a child uh, is just shocking. I mean, this is the kind of stuff of nightmares. And I just don't understand why the state would have acted this way. And I think that not only she, but the people of Florida deserve answers as to why such a raid that you would expect in a different country, perhaps, would even occur in Florida. It just doesn't make sense. And I spoke to a Republican former member of the Judicial Nominating Commission who resigned in part because of this action. And he suggested that possibly the um, the government was trying to intimidate people who might be whistleblowers inside of the uh, inside the government of the, of the state, uh, they might want to try to find out who's been communicating with her when they access Rebecca Jones's um, c computers and phones. And so as a way of, of trying to forbid or, or intimidate people from coming forward if they have any whistleblowing information. Now that's speculation, but uh, is that, does, does that resonate with you at all? It does resonate with me, and it does sound like that. It sounds like retaliation of a person who wanted to be transparent as it related to what was having, happening with COVID and the COVID numbers, you know, the number of people that were getting it, the number of people that were dying from it, perhaps, um, and to skew those numbers so that, you know, Floridians wouldn't be as fearful as maybe they otherwise perhaps could be if accurate numbers were being released. And that seems to be at the root of this whole issue. And why you come to somebody's private home uh, with about four or five agents uh, with guns drawn uh, because you want to check and see what her computer shows uh, seems beyond the pale. Um, it is beyond the pale, if that's the rationale. Uh, and so I, I think it's disturbing. And, you know, somebody needs to be held accountable as to why something like this happens to a, one of our fellow Floridians who was working for the state government at the time, then is fired because they claim she was insubordinate, and I don't know exactly what they mean by that, but you know, taking her side of the story, it's because she was trying to be honest with the people of Florida, be transparent with the people of Florida, and be honest about what was happening with this virus in our state. Well, that's what you should be doing, being honest, being transparent, and straightforward with the people of Florida. That apparently was her job, and it sounds like she was retaliated against uh, for having tried to do her job. We're speaking with Congress member Charlie Crist, a, a Democrat from <coughs> St. Petersburg. And Representative Crist, you used to be the governor of Florida and you were a Republican. Uh, if, if you were rep governor right now, how would you be handling the COVID-19 pandemic for Floridians? Well, I think much differently than the current governor. I'm very disappointed. And listen, early on, I was uh, very cautious about being a Monday morning quarterback. Uh, because it was new to everybody. It was novel, right, Sean? And so we were in uncharted territory. Well, we've been living with this or not living with this for some, sadly, and uh, God forbid, 
but you know, for nine months now or so. And you know, at this point in time, other states seem to have gotten the message and, and understand what's happening. I think President-elect Joe Biden understands what's happening. You need to be transparent. You need to be uh, honest. And, and their decisions need to be science-based. And you know, we're not getting that from our current leadership in Tallahassee. And it's very disturbing to me as a Floridian, and particularly as a former governor. You know, there are easy ways to deal with this. It's called being honest, being transparent, uh, leading with courage, and telling people that they ought to wear a mask, they ought to social distance, do things that are appropriate to minimize the effect of the virus on our fellow Floridians and our fellow Americans, for that matter. Well, let me turn to the response in Congress about a COVID-19 relief bill. <clears throat> the House has already passed two bills since the first one that, that actually passed the Senate and got signed by the president. Uh, yeah. But now, the, at the end of the session, <clears throat> Congress is trying to work in a last minute COVID-19 relief bill that might be palatable to both the Senate and to the president. What do you think will be included in that COVID-19 bill? Well, you know, I'm optimistic. Um, you know, uh, Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia has been very forthright on this issue. Uh, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, has had the same posture. Uh, they look like they're talking about a number that is similar, around $900 billion. Uh, but that would just be another uh, step. And then President-elect Joe Biden has said, you know, that's, that sounds like a good beginning, but it's not the end. You know, once I get sworn in on January 20th, President-elect Biden, I mean, that we'll have another opportunity to continue to fight this virus, do things that are responsible, make sure that people get payments that they need and deserve to keep their home, um, to make sure that they can pay their bills, uh, things of that nature, because a lot of people are suffering because of this virus, uh, not only physically, but economically. And Char uh, Congress member Charlie Crist, if you don't mind, if you have one more minute, I want to ask of you course. about Cuba. The Trump administration took away some of the freedoms <clears throat> for Americans to travel to Cuba that have been enacted during the Obama administration. What do you think will happen with the Biden administration? Will, do you think that Biden will be open to restoring some of those freedoms for Americans and to starting to repair uh, the relations with Cuba? I think that's a good possibility. Um, you know, President-elect Biden's an enlightened man. Obviously, he served as vice president to uh, Barack Obama. Um, and when they had more free engagement uh, with the island, you know, being able to show people, you know, what freedom is like, what capitalism can do in a positive way. Uh, and I had the opportunity to visit the island uh, not long ago uh, in the past year. And, and there was much capitalism that had broken out, still concerns, obviously, with how people are being treated. But, you know, we've had this policy over 50 years of no engagement, and it's gotten us nowhere. And more importantly, it's gotten the people of Cuba nowhere. Um, and I don't think a head in the sand approach is very smart. I think exposing people to what freedom is like, what uh, reasonable capitalism is like, is a positive step. And so I would anticipate that the Biden administration would move in that direction again. Well, Congress Member Charlie Chris, thank you so much for coming on WMNF today. Sean, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much and happy holidays to you and your listeners. Thank you. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.